reminder always for myself that Ya Allah, Ya Rasul, Amri Minkum and that we are an abdukul ajeezu da'eefu, miskeenu, zalimu, jahal and by the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. And these nights of tafakkur reminder always for myself that everything is based on this concept of tafakkur, every type of opening, every type of reality, every type of dress that Allah want to dress upon the servants. That the power of the soul is what we were sent to nourish and to bring up, not the power of the body. The body had to be disciplined with the usul, the different laws that bring a discipline, a cleanliness, a correct understanding upon the physicality. But the physicality was not the goal, means all of this is being broadcasted live all over the world. So it means all of our events are all live. This teaching of haqqaiqs and from Ahlul Malakut, wa Malakut kulli shay in Surat Al Yaseen, everything from Surat Al Yaseen is everything has a heart and the heart of Holy Qur'an which can't even be understood Allah's uncreated words, the heart of it Surah Yaseen as if Allah want us to direct ourselves to the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad Manzul Qur'an, the location in the house in which this Holy Qur'an is emanating throughout this universe and in this holy month from the way of marifa based on the power of nine. So nine times the fifth month is forty-five, Hajj Shahid forty-five, <coughs> 45th surah thirteenth verse. We should recite on the months the different secret of those verses of that month. In this month is the 45th surah has a, a door, a parde for only Allah that they are moving from Surah Tawbah, Ashab al Kaf, 27 Surah Al Nam, 36 Yaseen, from Yaseen opens up into Surah Al Jalthiya and continues into the powers of nine uh, regular people are moving from Surah Fatiha, Surah Al-Baqarah, Ali Imran from 1 through 12. Once they have been dressed from that reality and Allah grant them sincerity, then they're moving from the 9th all the way to 108th Surah on the 12th month which is the Kawtha to be dressed in Allah on the 12th month, the Hijra, the pilgrimage, Allah dresses them to be from Al Al Kawtha. This month its secret of this surah is verse 13, inshaAllah. A'uzu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem, bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim wa s-sakhkhar lakum ma fi s-samawati wa ma fi l-ardi jami'an minhu in في ذلك لآيات لقوم يتفكرون. Allah Zawajal Sakhar Lakum that we have granted to you, put under your authority, under your dominion. He's talking to Sayyidina Muhammad. All of Holy Qur'an is a dialogue between Allah Zawajal and Sayyidina Muhammad not between us. Our door was that we didn't exist. If you came through the door of non-existence then when you read Holy Qur'an this is a secret dialogue between Allah and Sayyidina Muhammad And Allah stating in this ayat al kareem that we have subjected to you everything, everything from my earth, everything 
into the sama means everything in the paradises, every angel in the paradises, Bayt al Mahmur in the paradises, everything you can think from these galaxies, these universe and then Allah give the all-encompassing lock on a contract, jamian. Jamian is the finality of the contract. In case somebody came back and said, Ya Rabbi not the souls, no Allah just said, no wrong, I gave the heavens, the earth and anything in between them we have subjected to you from Him. So if anyone wants to know who gave it, Allah clarifies, bin who? That we gave it. We have subjected, you are the sultanat, this is your sultanat. Otherwise what's the purpose of being a king and have no kingdom? This is the month in which they're moving from the heart of Surat Al Yaseen, dressed by the heart, dressed by the fountains and the flowing lights of Holy Qur'an which are coming from Manzil Qur'an, from the center of the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad into this surah where Allah is dressing that everything is under your authority. None know it but Ahlul Tafakkur because it's not something you're going to understand in your physicality. In your physicality and in our physical practices we are so concerned about our self and our relationship and everything about the me. The Turu come and teach that you are not important. If you annihilate yourself, La ilaha anta subhanika ini kuntum minan dhalimeen. If I truly believe, Ya Rabbi, that your greatness and I'm an oppressor to myself, I took a path in which I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing at all. And then that was the path of tafakkur. We'll repeat because you never know when somebody hits into their heart, even after years of hearing that word, that it's not about you, it's not about me. When I say you I'm talking to myself always, it's not about me, I'm nothing. I have no treasure to receive, I have no station to receive, I have nothing, nothing, nothing. But Allah sakhalakum, Allah said, I have given everything to Sayyidina Muhammad If you can achieve an understanding and practice the way of nothingness, then your journey begins in the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and that is the khanzallah, that is the treasure of Allah that is ulum al-awwaleen wa akhireen, ilm al-laduni wa hikmati bi saliheen. All of that is the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad what they call Nur Muhammadi, Haqiqat al-Muhammadiyya, the highest levels of haqiqat. All other knowledges are nothing in comparison to that knowledge. That reality requires us to be nothing. So it means then the tafakkur comes in our life to teach us, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. If I truly believe I'm nothing, that everything about myself, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, Ya Rabbi, let me just to reach a state of my nothingness and to be dressed by that light, blessed by that light, to be in the presence of those lights, then that whole reality begins to open, you will be with whom you love. Ahlul Fikr they don't like that hadith, they probably try to say it's daif because they think everything they're going to achieve is through their efforts, that they're going to pray and it's going to impress Allah they're going to pay and it's going to impress Allah People don't want to give a hundred dollars and they make thirty thousand a month. And then they say, we're having hard times. You know, the people out there making extreme amount of money and they don't want to give anything. And could you imagine you're going to approach Allah like that? Where companions were giving their lives, they were giving everything they had, they, 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 they struggled two days, uh, fight two times in, the, in a day. There's no life insurance, there's nothing. 
So then awliya came into our life, are you going to really try to sit with Allah of just Divine the Presence like that? You're going to go up into the heavens thinking, I'm going to show my amal to Allah and He's going to be impressed and He's going to say, please enter into paradise? Or He's going to say, all this amal you're showing me, it's not even worth the eyesight I gave you, the breath I gave you every day. You should have thanked me a thousand lifetimes for the breath and the existence I gave you. So awliyaullah come and said, no way, we're not going to enter through that. So this was a big opening that holy hadith. When he interrupted the Jummah of Sayyidina Muhammad and, said, and asked, what about Qiyamah? Haq, put the whole of our life is based on Qiyamah. What's going to happen with the Armageddon? What's going to happen when Allah call me to an account? Three times he interrupted Sayyidina Muhammad until Prophet knew who he is. And this was a mercy for the nation to hear that he's about to explain, what have you prepared that you're asking so many times? said, nothing. How you can dare to say that? <laughs> you have to contemplate, there's, a, there's an audience of some fierce Sahabi. You know, they have, they, they, they make the heavens shake these personalities that Allah surrounded Sayyidina Muhammad with. And he came and said, nothing. What Allah wanted to teach these great personalities that later generations would understand. I have nothing in comparison to what you have established, what your great companions have done, I have nothing. Except the love of Allah and love of Sayyidina Muhammad and Prophet said, then you will be with whom you love. Means that's the lifetime of tafakkur just on that holy hadith from Sayyidina Muhammad that our life is about we'll be with whom we love. What you can achieve from a state of muhabbat and good character doesn't mean you don't do. We do everything and we kept the 50 prayers that was given to Sayyidina Muhammad on Israhi wal Miraj and said, it's probably too much for my nation. Naqshbandiya keeps all the 50. If you count all of our tahajjud, our fajr prayers, the, the sunnah of the fajr, salatul tasbih, salatul shukr. All of those they kept but they never put an importance on that amal. They do all of that amal from ishq and love and muhabbat but they place no importance on that amal. And their whole focus in their life is how to build the muhabbat and love. For what is the value of all my actions if I have a rotten mouth and a rotten heart? Because the mouth and the heart is like the volcano. You know when you see the lava Allah describes what coming out of the mouth, if you think that's bad what's in the heart is far worse. So when you see an eruption of a volcano coming out, don't think that that's all that's in the volcano. There may be miles of lava under earth, there's a super volcano down here. If it should go, four of them will cover the earth in blackness because the extent of the lava they have under. It's like the heart of a human, Allah warns in Qur'an, no if you think their mouth was bad then know that their heart is far worse. So what's the purpose of all the aman? If the heart is bad, the mouth is bad, the character is bad. For could you have good character and a bad mouth? No, haqq and falsehood they don't go together. So it means that when they have a, a good heart and good character, Imam Ali said, then their mouth will be soft. They should be sweetened mouth, a sweetened tongue. So what's a Muslim? Someone whom is your safe within their hands and their mouth. You're not in danger from their hands and their mouth, that's a true Muslim. So it means then this way is based on these good characteristics. This tafakkur is the way of muhabbat and love. That when I sit I say, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I want to be with whom I love. 
Then Allah describes then Atiullah, Atiya Rasul, Ulur Amri Minkum, this Ulur Am, the real Ulur Am whom they stand guard for the Amr of Allah through the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad and upon this earth Allah gave them the title for Ulur Am, not what people gave and each one declares their own station and their people de declare what he is or what his title is, it's not important what people say. It's when Allah that they have the alif, they have the meme and they are Rabbaniyoon. So they are the real Ulul Am and they stand guard to that reality. When they come around they bring that muhabbat and that love. And then Allah describes that their heart, Qalb al mu'min Baytullah their hearts are the houses of Allah And that's why Allah said, don't, don't fight my awliya because I'll declare war upon you. Allah didn't say that anywhere else, don't fight here, don't yell at this, don't, don't bother this. But Allah described that if you come against my awliya that I'll declare war upon you. Why? Because it's the house of Allah It's actually you're coming against Allah and everything that contained within that house is Allah's Divinely lights. So it means these personalities in our life if we should come across them by their teachings, by their actions then the highest level to be achieved by muhabbat and love. That's why then their schools come to teach us have good character. As soon as they have good character, good softness, Everything within them is a training of their character. If they come through the door talking harsh then they will be continuously trained and cleaned into how to talk nice, how to talk polite, how to be able to be social and not an anti-social person, how to have all the characteristics that are pleasing to Allah when they have those characteristics then they begin their training that I'm nothing, I'm nothing Ya Rabbi that when I'm sitting and trying to make my tafakkur I'm asking to be nothing but let me to be with these awliyaullah, let me to be with my guides and my shaykhs and that to know that they're always present with me. For in my salah, as salaamu alaykum ayyuhan nabi wa ibadullahi salihin. They're in my salah in front of me, I don't see them yet. I give salams to Sayyidina Muhammad in present tense in every salah, Wa ibadullahi salihin, who are ibadullahi salihin? Wa Allah described they are Nabiin, Siddiqeen, Shuhadahi wa Salihin and they are with Allah they are the best of company. So means that when I'm sitting in my tafakkur, Ya Rabbi let me to be with these salihin. Let me to always be in their presence, let me to know that I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing and that they dress me from these fires, they dress me from their nazar and that they prepare me, clean me, train me to be under the nazar of what's next? Nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad Their job is to bring the tarbiyah and the good characteristic, take away the wildness, take away all the bad characteristics. So that to present you to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad And then their tafakkur opens and they find themselves always in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Out of their ihtiram and their respect they bow out of that and feel a shyness to be in that presence. So means then there is a system in which they train. You make your tafakkur, train in the tafakkur, show that you're nothing, show that you have the best of manners. When that begins to open and Allah accepts that sincerity, they begin to feel the presence, they feel the energy. They understood that it's nothing, that that light coming into them is dressing them because those servants have from Allah's hearing, that's Hadith Al-Qudsi, that's when all these hadiths they come together. When my servant approaches through voluntary worshipness, I become the ears in which they hear, the eyes in which they see, the breath in which they breathe, the tongue in which they speak, the hands in which they touch, 
the feet in which they move. When Allah dressed that servant, He begins to dress upon the light of the one making tafakkur. As soon as they sit for tafakkur and contemplation, when Allah finds that their character is good and they're sincere and they have istiqam that they continuously practice, continuously practice, continuously practice, they're firm in what they want to achieve. This is uh, the greatest jihad. It's not a jihad you hit the store one time and all the walls come down and you pillage and take all the treasures. Prophet described this as Jihad al-Akbar. These were two companions who were fierce in battle. This battle is far greater because every day you, you work, you work, you work and you feel nothing's opening. And you feel nothing's opening and Allah pushing you, pushing you, pushing you until the day you want to quit, that may be the day that it's supposed to open. He wants to see, you, are you a quitter? Then quit. There's 10,000 more lined up to come in. If you go, go, go to the point you think you're going to quit and say to yourself, I'm never going to quit until I'm dead in the grave. And they swing you around like you're on a rope of a helicopter, swing you, swing you, swing you and to shake you. Say, get off. He said, I'm not getting off. They say, get off. He said, I'm not getting off. And then they swing you a little bit <laughs> more. That's the imtihan in life. Allah is not in, in need for anybody to do this. He's not in need to grant you the heavens. He's not in need to grant you spiritual vision. Say, so I'll make you see what no one has seen. i make you hear what no ear has heard. Because each wali has a gift uniquely from Allah in which they feel they're the highest level of awliya. Because it's so unique and personal from Divinely Presence. Another awliya come to teach them, no, no, they're still a lot higher. Above every knower there's a higher knower. But Allah is not in need to give this, this is a mandatory to give it. It's from us to be firm, to be committed and to continuously struggle against our, ourself. Nowadays is coming in which difficulty will be immense upon earth. If you think that you can get your guidance from your physical eyes, it's not going to work. What's going to come to the physical eyes is horrific images. Do you think your ears from what you can hear on radio or not hear on radio anymore will give you guidance? What is it that will give you a state of assurity? All the money that you saved up and paid off your mortgage quickly is not, <laughs> it's not going to help you. And that's why at the beginning in Surat Tawbah was the first gate. Everybody should go back and read Surat Tawbah. At the first gate Allah says, we buy from you your dunya and we give in exchange your akhirah. There is a bargain and a transaction that has to be made. If you're holding your dunya and think you're going to grant all of the akhirah, Allah clarifies, no, no, we buy from you your dunya. They're going to take it, they take everything away and they give you an exchange your akhirah. If Allah want to give it back at another time that's Allah's prerogative. So they don't hoard up everything thinking it's going to be forever. The world is coming to an end, the bargain has to be made, faith has to be shown. Then Allah says that these ones are sincere. They believe that all these difficulties are coming, they believe in this belief and they want their heart to open and they're practicing the best to have good character, good character. No matter how much they're bombarded with difficulties, how much they're bombarded with testing and backbiting and gossiping, they remain in good character inshaAllah until Allah's rida and satisfaction dresses upon them. At that time they understood that dress comes upon them, they understood I'm nothing. When they're nothing the dress of these awliyaullah begin to dress them. They hear from that reality, they see from that reality, they breathe from that reality and they speak from that reality. They speak words that nobody speaks, not because of them 
but because who's behind them. Those souls behind, when you efface yourself into nothingness, their tajalli and their reality come into that insan. They're merely like a hollow shell, like a rent-a-car. The rider is the people of haqqaiq. That's why that they would say for Sayyidina Jalaluddin Rumi, don't worry about the nay, don't worry about the actual nay, but you should be concerned is who's blowing through it. Once I see this person doesn't size up to me as anything, that's not your concern. What you should be worried about is who's behind that person, who talks through them, who sees through them, who hears through them whose hands support them, whose feet are under them because they're just a reflection of that reality. That's the whole reality of tafakkur. Tafakkur was not to make myself into something but was mawt qabl al-mawt to die before I die. If you're dead then who's present now in that chair? إن شاء الله سبحانه وبحمده رب العزة تام وياسيفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين بحرمة محمد المصطفى وبسير سورة الفاتحة. Welcome to Muhammadan Way YouTube channel, your premier destination for videos on Sufi spirituality, classical Islamic teachings, and realities of the soul. With a library of over a thousand videos and new titles uploaded weekly. Join us to discover true meaning and inner peace in our often troubled world. Click the link now to subscribe.